Ready to start your journey? Whether it's your first workout or you are a seasoned athlete, Endurance for Everyone Coaching wants to work with you. Our coaching team has worked with athletes from beginners to USAT national qualifiers and are comprised of experienced runners, cyclists, and triathletes who have a passion for healthy living and have been where you are. We offer comprehensive coaching programs from weekly support to basic consultation, all designed to help you achieve your goals. If you want to take your performance to the next level, look no further than Endurance for Everyone Coaching. Go to www.teame4e.com and click on the coaching link or send an email to teame4e at enduranceforeveryone.com. And let's get started. Welcome to this week's Endurance for Everyone podcast. The following program is for entertainment purposes only. Though the hosts of this show are certified Ironman coaches, their attempts at long course triathlons and endurance events should not be taken as an endorsement for you to do something stupid too. You should make your own bad decisions, then podcast about it. Now, let's start the show. Hey, this is John Harris. And this is Rob Bozovich. And Endurance is for Everyone, and this is the Endurance for Everyone podcast. All right, welcome to episode 116 of Endurance for Everyone. I am your co-host, John Harris, down here in Florida, and with me, as always, is Rob up there in Pennsylvania. Say hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. You know, I knew you were going to say this. So we have a guest Teenage today. Teenage jokes never get old. <laughs> so we have a guest yes, today. Yes, we do. Um, you get to hear her voice three times on this episode because you hear it twice before the show ever starts every week. So uh, Miss Anna Vocino is a voiceover talent and stand-up comedian who also happens to be a celiac who writes cookbooks and a very good cookbook if you haven't got it. She co-hosts a Fitness Confidential podcast with Vinnie Tortorich and has voiced hundreds of commercials, cartoons, movies, promos, radio stations, video games, which is super cool job to support her passion of food logging and cookbook authoring. Can I say I'd even say that right? Cookbook authoring. Uh, her new cookbook and Amazon bestseller, Eat Happy, Gluten-Free, Grain-Free, Low-Carb Recipes for a Joyful Life, has 154, 154 easy-to-make low-carb recipes that are all delicious, comfort food free from sugars and grains. And it also has to cook for a husband, a teenage daughter, and a tiny dog. So uh, with that, all that, the best boys in podcast radio, Miss Anna Vicino. Hi. <laughs> Long time no talk. Thanks. I know. Thanks for having me on. Of course. Thanks for coming on. Well, you've always been very, very much a friend to our shows over the years, you know, all through the, the many incarnations of this show. I support so. all of it. <laughs> <laughs> all of the incarnations and all of the incarnations so we were talking a little bit about before the show got started about uh you probably have lost track of it now about how, how it's like become what it is now so um, yeah but you i don't you, know yeah well i started listening to you guys episode 13 oh uh, goodness I remember it well and the reason i remember episode 13 well was because episode 13 of iron man year one was the one that you were on with me and andrew oh so it was. I don't know why that happened like that. It wasn't That's planned. Interesting. It wasn't planned. What a coinky dink. What a coinky dink. But uh, but just to uh, remind you, I mean, this obviously started out as Iron Man Year One with Andrew Weaver, who was on the, your show with Vinny a couple of times. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, he's still up there in Pennsylvania in his uh, tool shed somewhere, uh, <laughs> <laughs> making things. Making things. <laughs> making things. Wood shop. He's John. an industrious a lad. Difference. A tool shed, wood shop. It's, it's a basement, right? So he, yeah, he's up there plugging away. Tool sheds are normally in the backyard. So you just contradicted yourself, John. Well, I don't. We don't have basements. Authority we don't gone. have basements down here in Florida. So you know, we don't. We don't have much need. So. so it would get flooded. That's right, and the crickets sound. Um, so we went from Ironman Year One, obviously, to Back of Pack Endurance, which. And then that lasted over 100 episodes. And then we went to Fat Slow Triathlete for a little while. And now we're at Endurance for Everyone. And the only, the only thing that's been the same across all of them is that 
is me and the fact that I cannot keep a co-host. <laughs> You're the common denominator I'm on that the, one. I'm the common denominator. Well, at least, at least you own it. I, I, I own it. I own it. Rob stuck with me. We're over 100 episodes on this one now, too. So if we put it all together, we're well over 400. So That's a lot. We're up there. We're up there. Not as much as you guys, but we're up there. Yeah, I think we're up to like almost 1,100 now. Yeah, you're over 1,000 now, right? Yeah. And it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's too it's, much. It's, it's too much. It, that's a lot. And, you know, and widening the gap with what, four or five a week still? So, uh, that's yeah, I only that. do one a week now. But when we started, I did, I did, I produced all three. Um, and it was very labor intensive, but it was fun. I'm glad we did it. Well, we talk about that too is that people don't realize how much work goes into this, especially yeah. when you're doing it yourself. Like I, I do it myself and I'm not, I don't have the equipment, <laughs> you know, so I'm like piecing yeah. things together as best I can. I've gotten better at it over the years, but, um, you don't have the equipment. You're down at the public library piecing these together. Pretty much. Yeah, he is. He's on, he's on a Dell from 1997. (laughs) I'm on an Asus from, (laughs) I had an Asus laptop. I liked that thing back in like 2003. Yeah. Oh, you're still on it. Okay. (laughs) You're being serious. I thought you were joking. (laughs) No, I'm on an Asus laptop. That's what I, that's what I'm using. I think Maybe we could have a Kickstarter to get you a new laptop. We should. I keep trying to get people like to become patrons and stuff. John needs yeah. equipment, but it doesn't, I don't. Let's I don't do a little it. plug, guys. Listen, <laughs> audience, this is a really good podcast. John needs a new laptop. This is it's sad. It's play some sad music because this is really no. sad that he's on an Asus laptop from 2005, <laughs> and that's how he's editing together a podcast. It takes him, it takes him probably 14 hours to put one hour of podcast content out. So that's if true. you guys could just you support this podcast, what is it on uh, Patreon or whatever it's called, or uh, what is it on? P- just PayPal him yeah. money for a new Asus. It's I mean, on- those <laughs> things they only run like three hundred dollars. Like we could get him a new one. That's right. They're very cheap, right? <laughs> thanks. So Anna. that's my uh, that's my free plug for you. <laughs> thanks, thanks. See, there you An- go. Another free plug. Yeah. Another free plug. Yeah. Um, but like I said, you've always been very generous with your. You've done the intro for us since going back to back of pack endurance. So my um, pleasure. And I was actually trying to not do that again because I I feel bad, you know. <laughs> then you just chime in. And say, I'll do it. Oh, I was happy to do it. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's my way of giving back. I like supporting the podcast community that yeah, way. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. The, but so as far as this show, it's, it's doing pretty well for what it is, you know. Good. But um, uh, not, you know, not near as well as, you know, the stratosphere that Vinny's in. Oh, have you talked <laughs> to somebody named, I'm going to just do, this is going to be so boring for everyone. Have you talked to somebody named, is it Matthew Gustafson? Hold on. Maybe I'm, I'm trying to look up his name. Have you had him on your show? No. Who is he? Okay, you you should have him on. He's a listener of our show. Yeah, Matthew Gustafson. He lives in Hawaii, and he was like nine million pounds. And he went uh, NSNG, and then now he just did yesterday. He did the Hawaii Lava Man, really, which is basically like one of their triathlons, like one of their crazy triathlons. Yeah, he would be a good a good guest to have on. He's really sweet. All right, yeah, I'll look at him. Did you write that down, Rob, or do you want me to? Matthew Gustafson. He's on Facebook. He's in the. I group. actually did. <laughs> Great. Done. Rob, Rob is usually right, the one who reaches out. I'm done for you guys. I'm done. <laughs> You're done. I'm done. I Got quit. <laughs> so, um, so where was I going with that now? I have no I don't know. idea. I have no idea. I have no idea. Let me jump in for you there, John. Go I'll ahead, be the, your, uh, you know, you are the cow captain of the ship here. You, you were basically saying Anna's, Anna's been with us a very long time. Uh, and what we had kind of said off mic as well, but we'll come back to it here, is uh, we know who she is and, and, and have been on the path with her. But we don't want to take it for granted that everyone – in the audience knows who she is and you know and you read uh, some clips from her bio there about all the great things she's doing um you know and we just want to have you on and i appreciate you coming here to go ahead and you know talk a bit you know tell us maybe just recap your journey you know more in more detail of uh, than what you have there you know yeah what got you course. what you're working on etc yeah, I uh, I basically I I was always super skinny. I was one of those really annoying people who could eat whatever they wanted and be rail thin. And the consequence of that, I don't know how it is for other thin people, but the consequence of that was I ate like dog shit. Like I ate just junk food, McDonald, like whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. And uh, subsequently, I don't think I was that healthy. 
especially for being a young person who should be healthy. And uh, I did dance a lot. I was a dancer. And so, you know, I dealt with anorexia. I dealt with when I when I wasn't eating, I was not eating to the point of hurting myself. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, I just didn't have a healthy relationship with food. And then uh, a couple years after my daughter was born, I was 28 years old and my mom called me and she said, uh, I was just diagnosed with this thing, this autoimmune disease called celiac disease. And I was like, what? And she's like, and you probably have it too. Cause it's hereditary. And I was like, well, I don't have that. I don't, I don't ever eat bread or pasta. Like I knew to give up bread or bread and pasta, like back when we were doing the South beach diet in like 1993, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, I don't eat bread or pasta. So I'm probably fine. And celiac is an autoimmune disease where your immune system attacks the small intestines and it seems to be that eating gluten is the trigger for that. Gluten being the, the protein in wheat, barley, spelt, and rye. So if you eat those, it sets your immune system off and it destroys the villi in your small intestines. And if you remember back to like high school biology, the villi are the little tiny microscopic fibers that absorb all the nutrients in your gut. So we want the villi. And if they're destroyed, you can't absorb nutrients. So basically my whole life I was eating food and not absorbing nutrients. So I went to get tested for it. I was diagnosed with celiac. Uh, they did a DEXA scan. I had osteopenia, which is the step right before. They basically were like, you have the bones of an 80-year-old. No. Um, I was extremely anemic. I had terrible gastrointestinal distress, but I just figured because I was like, well, I just eat junk food. Um, I had... Uh, allergies and asthma. Like I was a mess for being a 28 year old. And so I found that when I gave up gluten, uh, a lot of things started clearing up. I started to feel a lot better, but the downside is that I started to absorb things <laughs> that I literally food just went right through me. It's right. not healthy, but it was a skinny maker. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, yeah. yeah. And it's funny because I can I, I, I almost hear people go like, oh, I'd rather be skinny. No, you wouldn't. You don't want to be skinny and unhealthy and you don't want to be heavy and unhealthy. Either way, you don't want to be, you know what I mean? You want to eat right for your for your body. Right. So I uh, started putting on weight slowly over the years. And now, granted, genetically, I come from a stock of people who are not big people. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I put on 40 pounds over the years, but I had never you know what I mean? So I, it, it was a big shock. So when I started the podcast with Vinny, I was already food blogging gluten-free stuff. Cause I was like, well, I'm going to figure out how to make gluten-free everything like lasagna and red velvet cake and key lime pie so that no one will know what's gluten-free because at the time the gluten-free baked goods and flours and stuff like that on the market were horrible and they were super expensive. So I was like, well, I'm going to figure this out and blog about it. And I just got fatter and fatter. Mm -hmm. So I, I, uh, when I met Vinny and started doing the podcast, you can hear in the early years, I'm like, I don't know, Vin, I don't know about this NSNG thing. You're I mean, I was his co-host and I was like, I think I'm just going to go back to Weight Watchers I and do I would do Weight that, yeah. right. And yeah. I would do it for like four days and I would be starving because I would be doing that thing where you're like, I never did Weight Watchers longer than about 10 days. Mm -hmm. I would always give up. You know, that thing where you're like, if I eat a trough of spinach, then I can have like two inches of a brownie. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like it was so it was sick mm -hmm. and um, and never really lost any. I would lose like three pounds and then gain it back and lose three pounds and then gain it back, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, yes, right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then I started NSNG and um, and I loved it. I actually lost about 12 to 15 pounds yeah. and have kept it off and uh I feel like, too, the other thing that's happened from doing that podcast was that I started seeing a functional medicine doctor, found out that I have hypothyroidism. I've been there. Fa you know, yes, you have. <laughs> and, uh, you know, found out that if your thyroid's messing with things, along with the dysbiosis in the gut, meaning uh, an, an, an imbalance of uh, gut bacteria, mm -hmm. uh, I was kind of destined to just keep putting on weight if I wasn't starting to cut these processed foods out of my diet. So I'm very grateful for that. That's kind of bringing us up to current. Yeah. I mean, well, I know, you know, hypothyroidism, you know, without a thyroid, that's what you are. So, you know, without the gland at all. And that's what I tell people and, you know, all the time is that it's not that I'm eating badly. It's just that I gain weight very, very easily. Right. And it doesn't take much. And, They'll say, well, how, like having one sandwich, like having two slices of bread, how's that make you gain weight? And I will. How's that? I was like three ounces of bread make you gain two pounds the next day. Well, because it inflames you all over the place. 
You know, it inflames that's... you, and boy, oh boy, the the water that is required for your body to retain to digest mm-hmm. those grains is insane, and yeah. that's why we always have people in our Facebook group who are very heavy who say, "I lost ten pounds the first week." Oh yeah, and I, and it's not uncommon at all. Uh, if somebody thinner lost 10 pounds in one week, we'd be a little more concerned. But if somebody's really heavy, they could certainly lose 10 pounds of maybe two pounds of fat and eight pounds of water weight in one week. Well, a just story, cutting out the inflammatory foods. Right. A story I tell people is that this is well before you guys. Uh, when I first got out of the military and got my bachelor's degree, I was trying to get in the FBI. And um, this is when this is after the cancer. But it was it was when I was still just still on the upward swing of weight gain. So I thought it was fat. Then it was like 210 pounds. Right. And I thought it was fat then. Um, and I had a, uh, I got through the first two parts of the FBI interviews and I had to go into my, uh, my face to face on Monday. And I was, and this was like Thursday week before. And I said, I got to, I got to lose weight. I got to figure out a way to lose weight. <laughs> and I did, um, I went on strict Atkins for like mm. four days and lost mm-hmm. and lost 17 pounds. In I believe days. it. I totally believe it. <laughs> and, and people was like, how would you lose that much weight? Because it just fell off me. But you can't keep that up. You just can't. No. And uh, yeah, it, it was it was amazing how quick it falls off you. But, you know, a lot of that's water, like you yeah. said. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, it felt good for a while. I felt great, you know, because I went from, you know, like 210 down to back down into the 180s again. Right. Um but it came roaring back, you know, and, you know, top it out well over 300 at one point. But, um, you know, that's and and the thing is, and we kind of we were talking about this before the whole celiac disease. And, and you, you write in the cookbook, um, Eat Happy, is that, you know, I've cooked many things in that cookbook. And I, Christine Cox, has, I think, cooked everything in that cookbook three times. That's um, awesome. That makes <laughs> me know? happy. Yeah. Um, there's it's. You know, it's for it's for celiac, you know, and it's for, you know, gluten free, but there's nothing in there that's bad. You know, as No, I mean, listen, some celiacs have to contend with and my i I'm in this category of we really should also avoid dairy because yeah. of the of the phenomenon that's called cross contamination, which is the molecules in dairy and the molecule of gluten are very similar and then, and it can incite the autoimmune response. Right. Um, so a lot of celiacs also find out they have to avoid dairy. They're like, why am I still having symptoms? And then they cut out dairy and then the symptoms go away and they're able to repair the gut. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but my audience is not just celiacs. It's people who it's mostly, uh, folks who want to lose weight, folks who are type two di- diabetic folks who are dealing with other autoimmune issues. So I have a cross section. So I always say like half the recipes are dairy free, half aren't, but you could make any one of them and you'll be fine. And you can once to, once you're used to cooking without dairy, you you can figure out what to do to sub stuff. Yeah. And the dairy, it's the, real easy. the dairy thing is something I've just started looking at, to be honest, is that, uh, I've noticed, well, I have throat damage for, from the cancer again, but, uh, I've noticed that I, I always feel like something is in the back of my throat mm. and it's hard to, it's hard to explain what that feels like, but there always feels like something's back there. Interesting. And, and then I cut out dairy and it went away. <laughs> That's really it's like, interesting. It's like, I wonder if there's a connection because, you know, I was, you know, I'm doing the, uh, the bulletproof coffee and stuff like that with the heavy mm-hmm. cream. And so I said, well, you know what? I'm going to just start taking it just black, just drinking iced coffee. <laughs> you know, I was going to say, I do have a recipe on my site for dairy free bulletproof coffee because I had oh, that I same thing, that. right? I can't put butter and cream yeah. in my coffee. So I, I use a little, you can, whatever makes your coconut cream, coconut oil, um, whatever little mixture you want to do. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I sometimes I use the coconut creamer that's in comes in like the creamer thing, but then sometimes I open a can and just keep that and just put a little dollop in and mix it up like a latte, you know, in the, in the blender Yeah, because I want to have a latte too. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. It's like, you know, I like coffee, thank God, you know, and I can drink it black, but um, yeah, you kind of miss that, that uh, creaminess, I guess is what yeah. I'm saying. And I noticed like when I stopped drinking it, it went away. Yeah, That's like, interesting. Oh. You know, I lot I know a lot of voiceover talents who have given up dairy and it's gotten rid of all their post nasal drip because you can't mm-hmm. be like coughing the whole time you're having a session when you're recording. Right. And uh, I, I find it interesting. And, and I'm not demonizing dairy at all. If you can handle it, I say eat it because it's a really lovely thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's, delicious. It's very good. Cheese, cream, 
full fat yogurt, <laughs> whole milk. Great. I know exactly. Go for it. So I'm not, I'm not trying to demonize as evidenced by half my recipes have dairy and half don't. And I love those days when I am making a dairy filled recipe. Like I, I invented a, a, a zucchini noodle Alfredo the, on Saturday. And I was like, so I have an excuse to eat some dairy. And I'm like, Oh, this is so good. This is so good. It's so good. <laughs> It's one of those things, though, the longer you have to go without it, the better it tastes when you finally get to have it again. <laughs> exactly. I yeah. feel like I appreciated it more. Oh, Although yeah. sometimes I won't have it for a while, and then I'll taste it, and I'll be like, that cheese doesn't taste as good as I remembered. But I also feel that way about sugar because, you know, I have a philosophy of if you're going to ha- make a dessert, make one with the least amount of sugar possible. I don't personally endorse using a bunch of artificial sweeteners or even stevia because it to me, I, A, I don't like the taste. B, yeah. I don't want to eat the chemicals. I know people out there going, well, stevia is not chemicals. It's natural. I would just answer that with, is uh, it? Is it? Is it? <laughs> so, I, was um, just, I was just having this discussion today at work. See, really? I, listen, I got one of the reviews on the book, which I try not to read, to be honest with you, because if I do see a bad one, I get upset. But um, one guy called me an idiot for saying that stevia was an artificial sweetener. In the book, and and I just want folks to know my philosophy is don't eat sugar, and then, but one hundred percent of people who go low carb, one hundred percent of people who go low carb, eat sugar again. That's yeah. just a fact. <laughs> so if you're going to have your sugar, if it's your birthday and you want to make a nice cake, there's a recipe in there, and that cake has the least amount of sugar possible to make that recipe work. Right. I would rather see you enjoy a nice thing than going, screw it, I'm just going to eat a whole Ralph sheet cake, you know what I mean, right, <laughs> and have right. some garbage cake from the grocery store. I'd rather see you eat a nice thing with nice, nice ingredients. Exactly. That's my philosophy. Well, exactly. Eight out of the te- 12 dessert recipes have some form of sugar in them. I think that's very confusing to people because they want to they want to have a category. Well, this is low carb, so it shouldn't have any sugar. Well, this is paleo, so it can have honey. Or the, And I'm saying this is not – we're not in a category. We're not in a thing. Mm-hmm. I don't do nutritional information. We are grownups. We are adults. And we have gotten so far away from what our bodies know to, to do, which is tell you when you're full and tell you when you're hungry. <laughs> That's, that's true. That's true. And what I've done, what I've tried to do recently, not just recently over the years is that I try to eat slower, which is very hard for an Italian. It's really hard. I want to gobble. I I literally inhale my food. It's bad. (laughs) Yeah. And, and, and speaking of, so we come, we come from the same stock, but remember we, we, we discovered that we're actually, our families are from the same place. That's right. I forgot well, about that. We're both from Bari, Italy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Actually, my family's from Betanto, which is just north. I have been but, to Bitonto. Bitonto. I have Bitonto. not. <laughs> so. Oh, it's really lovely. They have a really beautiful church there. <laughs> is that like I've actually, everywhere in I've Italy? Been, I mean, yes. But I found Bitonto very charming. And yeah. in fact, my daughter was young when we went there, and we brought home an elephant that we bought from like a toy store there, and we named it Bitonto. Bitonto. Bitonto mm-hmm. the elephant. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah, I'll get there oh, one day. I'll get it's there great. One day. But, but you need was, to go stay at Villa Capelli, and then you can just take a road trip and go yeah, all over. Didn't you? Yeah, didn't you? Uh, did you see my uh, comment on that? Your whole road trip thing over there. Some of us can't afford that. I know. I would. You know what? I, if I could, I would do it in a second because it just seems like it'd be a great trip. It's amazing. Priorities, John. Sell Priorities. one of your kidneys and head on over. Yeah, I exactly. Know. It's like, how yeah. many of them organs do you need, son? How, how many do you need? <laughs> you only need half a liver, too, right? Uh, something yeah, like it's that. Fine. It's fine. <laughs> You're fine. I wouldn't test that personally, but if you want to, go ahead. Just, <laughs> can you just take out the fat part of it? Just take right, exactly. Of the... <laughs> um, what was I going to say now? Say, Rob, you take over. So I, I've lost my train of thought. Me, me take over. Yeah. Hey, Rob, we're going to ignore you for seven minutes, but we're going to pull you right back into it. Let me see here. Let's see. Uh, everything in Anna's cookbook is delicious. Uh, this weekend I had a donut because I wanted something. And then, you know what? I've never ate a donut and been like, wow, that was worth it. So seriously, guys, though, you know like, what? Anna's cookbook is amazing. And, I, and you have a second one coming out. Did you really uh, eat a donut well. this weekend? I did. Was, was, it it was, not a good, was it not a, like a good – where was it from? 
Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, just uh, on the road. Well, yeah, it just, well. It's, you know, it's never like seriously. I like I, I ate it and like I looked at my wife and I said, you know, I've never like really ate one and thought like, wow, that was delicious. So. I don't know. Like you made the comment earlier, like your recipes don't have the um, nutrition facts, and we're all adults. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's certain things that now, it, it, you know, at 35 in life, I, I ought to realize like this just isn't worth it. And you know, but that being said, is and but anything, that's okay everything though. Out of the is. Do you know what? I, to me, I go, that's okay because that's a clarifying moment for you to be like, oh, I just want a goddamn donut. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. totally normal. That's why I say 100% of people who give up sugars and grains eat sugars and grains again. It's just yeah. part of the natural evolution of it. And it just means that, that you're, you're, you're figuring out because now you'll go next time you'll go, eh, it's not worth it. If you're at a yeah. place, though, where they're like, this is the best donut in the world. I've been to places, too, where they're like, this is the best ice cream. This is the best ice cream you'll ever have. And I'm like, sweet, I'm getting it. And I get the ice cream and I take two bites and I'm like, I don't like it. And I can I have the ability now to throw it in the trash because I don't feel that pressure anymore of going like, well, it's the best ice cream. I better eat the whole thing, even though I don't I don't think it even tastes that great. You know what I mean? Like you, you get that like. It's okay. All I'm saying is it's okay. And we, we're we way too hard on ourselves. And I watch my husband do it all the time who has zero willpower. And uh, we were living in New York and uh, we were living right literally a block away from the donut pub, which is the most amazing donuts. It really is. I guess so. I don't know. I can't eat gluten. So it, this smells good. So <laughs> he, he got a donut like every other night. He's like, I'm, I'm going to donut pub. Like he's a maniac. Like he's a junkie going on the street corner for his fix. And um, and every single time he'd be like, oh, I shouldn't have eaten that. And two nights later, I'd be like, I'm going to donut pub. Uh, I've got a donut and, pub. And I'm like, I'm like, why do you go if you're just going to beat yourself up? You either eat the donut and make peace with it or don't eat the donut and make peace with it. That's it. But we all we do, we eat the donut and then we're like, oh, I'm such an asshole. I hate that donut. Or we go, oh, God, all I want is that donut for like eight hours. You know what I mean? <laughs> ah, I want that donut. Like we're – it, we're like drug addicts. Yeah. So I think that when you give up sugars and grains and you increase the fat, it helps. It helps to 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 what, what's the word mitigate, I guess. It helps to mitigate those cravings. Yeah. But there's we have a we're humans. We have a big, long, vast emotional history tied up with food. So when you see a donut at a thing and you're on a road trip and you're at Dunkin' Donuts and you think like a million memories of eating a donut, and you're like, I'm going to eat that donut. And then you eat it and then you're like, oh, I shouldn't eat that donut. And I say you got to take out the self the the cursing yourself you know what i mean because you ate the donut big deal you probably won't do it again right that's my spiel bye I, I, okay. I, I, <laughs> thank you i ate something <laughs> i ate something bad um saturday i had a Dor <laughs> i i had a dorito how was it it was really wait good. Say, wait john singular you had a dorito yeah I, you didn't have a dorito i had because yeah, the last nobody, time i had doritos i had like 25 doritos because like what i okay. ate the dorito i was at a super bowl party i was like what Oh left. my God! Everybody eating these. They're like, yeah, they're Doritos. I'm like, I haven't had a Dorito in like ten years. <laughs> I went nuts. That's what I said. Actually, I left out yeah. a word. I should have said I ate a bag of. No, oh, I okay. There I, it had, is. I had there four Doritos. I had four Doritos. I was able to uh, stop myself. It was the new Blaze ones or uh, something Blaze or like Buffalo spicy Buffalo Doritos. They sound they sound garbage, but yes, I, I, I <laughs> I'm sure they tasted delicious. How do you <laughs> really feel, Ann? They were red. <laughs> Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, it's, there's no red food, right? <laughs> just just apples and cherries, I believe. There's no orange food. And red meat raspberries. is nice. Raspberries. Raspberries, yeah. Red yeah. meat is good, too. Red meat is oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. I. but that's what I'm saying. I get it. And it's okay. Everyone is going to do that. That's, that's the thing. It's like it, the faster we can get to the like, uh, you know what? That wasn't even as good as I wanted it to be. Or with me with the Doritos, I had just regular nacho cheese Doritos and I was having like memories of fifth grade and like, oh, this is so good. And then I stopped and it was over and I literally could not care less about eating a Dorito again, probably for the rest of my life. It's okay. Right. And, we're and I we're guess all going to be okay is what I'm saying. Yeah, and I guess that was a point Saturday is that I was able to stop. I, I took took a few of them, and I ate them. And I said, okay, they're, yeah. they're good. They're good. And I could see that. They're like crack. But, Thinking uh, about the old way of eating, that bag would have been polished off. Oh, easy. Sitting on my you know? belly. Sitting yeah. on my belly, perched on my belly just with lay, my two laying. liters of soda. You don't, even bother, you don't even bother to sit up to eat them. You just lay yeah. down. yeah. Lay down, you, get the crumbs off your chest. Yeah. <laughs> well, the exactly. belly was almost seeing a problem here. <laughs> the, yeah. The but I mean, this is point. how far you've come. 
Right. The belly was at a point, though, if you'd sat just the right way, it just fell out of the back into your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Just just breathing. It yeah. just continued to feed you. <laughs> right. Well, I'm thinking, too, of how far I've come, because even like five, six years ago, I would have like we get the Mexican Cokes from Costco, mm-hmm. um, which are different than the regular Cokes. You know, the Mexican Cokes that have cane sugar in them instead of real Coke that has uh, yes. corn syrup. Yes. So we get the Mexican Cokes from Costco. And uh, this is probably five, six, seven years ago. And we would have those as a treat. You know what I mean? Like that would be a treat. <laughs> and now, like, I, I think I've maybe had one sip of soda in four years and I, I taste it. I'm like, oh, it's too. It's like, bleh. like, yeah. I can't take it anymore. So yeah. things evolve. But I un, I also understand it took me years to peel back the diet mentality. And I wanted to count, too. I wanted to count calories and and fat grams and macros. And I wanted to count everything. I want to count glycemic index and this, that and the other thing. And and and. What I what I want to be for people is the beacon of you can get out, you can peel back the layers of that onion and you can get out of diet mentality and you can just prepare food and eat it. Well, I mean, I, I argue with this with people still, Anna, to this day about just that thing is like the, the whole calorie counting thing. And, and people that I'm close to are still say it to me. It's like, well, it has too many calories in it. It's like, so what? Why are you looking at right. the calories? I mean, look at what, what's in it. You know, I don't right. care how many calories there are in it. Well, it has too, and then someone said, well, it has too much fat in it. There's too much fat in that. What? Yeah, that's not the problem. What? <laughs> that's much, not the problem. How much sugar's but, in it? You know, but. Folks don't know. I mean, this is the whole, I, listen, it, I've just, I read Obesity Code, Jason Fung's Obesity Code oh. uh, a few years ago, but I just started listening to the, to it on audiobook, which is great. Whoever reads his audiobook is fantastic. Yeah. And, uh, it's just it's infuriating because you hear exactly how we were fed a, a raw bill of goods. Oh, right. And and how ingrained it is. You brought up Weight Watchers. It's so ingrained. You brought up Weight Watchers earlier. Mm-hmm. And it's like mm-hmm. I argue with people about Weight Watchers all the time. And they're still you cannot convince them. It's like mm. arguing. It's like arguing with a Scientologist. It's like, well, it, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't like, argue with a Scientologist. I feel like you're just playing with fire. Yeah. But I, I just feel the like, fact that I said that they're going to come after. I you. know they're going to come after you. They'll be like, yeah. eh, you're a what do they uh, call John. it? An undesirable. What do they call it when you're an un? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. that you have a word for it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I feel like <laughs> Weight Watchers is tricky too because it has done some people a lot of good. You know what I mean? Yes. But for most folks who really struggle, the diet aspect of it is not working. It. I have two friends of mine who it's worked so well for. <laughs> you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I just go, okay, cool. No problem. Well, that's the first thing they throw at you is that, well, it's worked so well for me and it's worked so well for my sister or, or my brother <laughs> or something like that. It was usually not a brother, but, you know. It's worked so Let's well. be honest, too, though, is it's really hard when something's working. We've been fed, like you guys have said it, see, we've been fed so much for so many years. It's really hard when something is working. I've lost five pounds, 10 pounds, whatever, and you're sticking with it. And, and I'm going to, sorry, Anna, this is how I talk. I hit like five different topics at once because you know, I kind of sit do back it. and do it. But you know, that being that, that being said is, uh, using myself as part of an example, where, where we're saying here is, you know, um, no, I did every diet under the sun, up and down in weight through through the years, and we you get so ingrained in something. You talked about your husband that's with no willpower. I have no willpower. Zero is easier than one. If I have a jelly bean, I'm going to eat the entire bag, the right. entire jar, right. whatever's there. I can't stop. I don't know what it is. Same deal. You talked about Cokes and so forth. You know, I, I switched to diet sodas at one point, and then, but it was just a manner of still going in to the grocery store while I'm traveling or the, 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 the the gas station and getting a candy bar and 16 other things while I'm on mm-hmm. the road trip and consuming 400 to a thousand calories of just garbage and crap. So it's been 2009, maybe 2010. I said, that's it. No more, um, no more diet sodas period. I haven't had mm. a sip of soda in almost, you know, seven and a half, eight years now. That's awesome. And it's all or nothing. And for me, it's getting that when I say getting that streak going, and that's why it's really hard and coming back around to the point of it, I 
when I started, I've been up and down a weight anywhere from 187 pounds to 300 pounds. And, wow. you know, in quick, in quick swings, like, like 10 to 18 month increments at a clip, you know, up and down both, both ways. So what worked for me and what I'm in the throes of it, Hey, I'm six months into running and I'm using air quotes, watching what I eat. You know, the one year I did the Pittsburgh marathon in May, I did the, the New York marathon in the fall all physically wow. ran 1600 miles that year could not get beneath 230 pounds and that's a lot of time you know exercising but i'm doing my fitness pal or whatever the heck it was just like weight watchers whatever the app on your phone i tried weight watchers tried it all and it was working but i hit that plateau that mm-hmm. being said then you know, for me I finally, after listening to, because I was then backlogging and listening to all of your shows, you know, you and Vinny's, I fi- you know, it made sense, and it was finally like the day after the New York Marathon. I'm like, that's it. I'm I'm switching. So between like November one and maybe like January fifteen, mm-hmm. I was down to 189 pounds. It was like 40 pounds instantly, Jeez. and the difference was just doing that. Now that. Being said, as I sit here today at 205 and you go back another five, four or five months ago, John and I were talking, I was pushing 230 again. And when I say it's about knowing, it's not a lack of knowledge now at this point. It's right. the, I know for me, I could eat and, and you know, when I say shitty, I could have pizza, pasta, grain, whatever, 20%. Maybe, 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 you know, uh, 15% of the time. But for me, that's like one meal. So if I have that like Saturday afternoon or Sunday or Saturday evening, that's it. But the problem I should say, and, and this, and it's still like my wife has seen me do this and she's seen it work for me, but she's, she's bought in, but she's not completely bought into it. I don't know how right. she's not. And, and I'm, I'm, it's, I'm, you know, being a good husband and married, you know, um, she's prepping the meal. She's doing this. She wants to order the blue aprons and she wants to order, you know, she wants to go for this. Sometimes it's easy because it was a long day, you know, whatever. And that being said, is she's like, well, look, you're still eating, you know, 80%, you know, pretty good because she looks at it as a per plate, not a cumulative through the week. But you know what I mean? A, yeah. For me, and I, when I say I know what, what messes me up, granted, I cry. Once I'm off the wagon, hey, then on the weekend it will be ice cream at the friends or cake. And it's never worth it. It's never the best in the world. But, you know, it's she sees it as every single meal like, oh, 80 percent of your plate is meat and veg and you can have 20 percent of this. That throws me off. I have to yeah, do it. Yeah, like, I agree. I, th- I, I think it's yeah, better that- to, to, I think it's better to, st- if you're going to do NSNG or low carb or whatever you want to call it, um, I prefer NSNG because to me, it, it uh, low carb does smack of the, the fa- like trying to, everyone's trying to create the fake food version. Like, can I have a chocolate cake or a bread or a thing? And I say NSNG because it's more of a real food movement, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just being stereotypical. I'm not like generalizing other than for that reason. But I, I think that compliance is very important. And then, you know, for your splurge, it's got to be a deliberate choice you're making. You know what I'm saying? Because I I think that if you're sporadically eating, like I am the same way. I, I messed around with it and thought, well, I can have fries with this burger patty instead of a green salad. And then, you know what I noticed every time I did that, I would be about an hour later, maybe two hours later rooting around for some sort of carb. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, and it's almost this, it's like the subtlest little impulse. And then you're like, oh God, I just want to eat it. Like, I want to eat it. You're like, because the little beast is awakened. And, um, (laughs) so if you, let's say you do that at lunch, right. Then forget it. You know what I mean? It's over for the rest of the day. Cause you're going to just be looking for carbs because now you've gotten on the blood sugar train. Yep. And, and that's a really tough thing. So I think that compliance is very important. I think that when you're first starting out, if you just cut out sugars and cut out grains, you're going to be doing really well. Then you can fine tune if you're like, I, maybe I need to cut out dairy or whatever. You know, some people have, uh, some people with autoimmune ha- can't do like nightshades or legumes. And that's a very specific subset of people. Most people who have, uh, who got cut out sugars and grains are going to be fine. And sometimes it takes time for the body to heal. We are inflamed. We are like inflaming our bodies. 
with sugars and grains. And so it takes time for the body to heal, but the body knows what to do. You just have to let it. So that's why compliance is very important. So if you have a little bit here and a little bit there, it's not going to work. Right. Because because you're you're going to have that hormone. It's a hormonal thing. It's not a calorie in calorie out thing. So you're having a hormonal reaction. So let's say let's say you just eat meat and veg and maybe some fats and dairy. Um, let's say you do that for like four or five days. Let's say you finally gotten off the sugar train. Let's say now you're up to 10 days. You're feeling pretty good. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty good now. I've, I've lost maybe three or four pounds in water weight. Um, then you're up to like maybe two weeks. You're like, Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, and then you go to the thing and your friend's birthday cake is there. What do you do? It's tough you because eat? you want to have the cake. Uh, well, I do I, eat, the, eat all of it. Well, see, that's why I say <laughs> – don't do it if you can. I have a I have a really socially acceptable excuse, and that is I have celiac, so I can't eat everybody's birthday cake. It's awesome. <laughs> but now what's happening is people are so sweet and thoughtful. Like I went to my writer's group the other day, and they had gone over to a place that made – they brought donuts, and then they made they went over to a place that did gluten-free donuts, and they uh, got a donut for me. And I'm like, who makes – I've never even heard of a gluten-free donut. And they ha- and there here it is. It's boysenberry. Luckily, I was like, oh, that sounds terrible. I'm not yeah. have a boysenberry donut. I was like, why, is, why do they not make chocolate donut? Like, what's wrong with them, yeah. boysenberry donuts? That's stupid. How you, and, what is, um, what's a boysenberry? It's a kind of berry, I guess. I took a bite. I was like, oh, it tastes like boysen. It tasted like a blueberry <laughs> muffin. That's, that's it was, what I was fine. Get, that's what I was kind of getting at. I was like, I'm not going to eat a berry that tastes like a boysen. Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense. But what I'm saying is that, like, I think that sticking with it solidly for at least 60 days and then deciding if you're going to go off the rails. But, yeah, it does take some planning and it does take some uh, commitment and it does take. But I, But at the same time, you don't have to be counting things. You're okay. Just give up sugars and give up grains. You don't have to count anything. But and, I, and in fact, I always say this: I would rather see somebody overeat the meat, the veg, the fats, the dairy. I'd rather see you overeat those foods and mm-hmm. stick to it for a longer amount of time, so that you're retraining your body and you're retraining your hormonal response. Than uh, you know what I mean. You can't restrict. You can't do this as well as restrict calories. It doesn't work. It's a recipe for disaster, so don't do that. But yeah, I, I agree. I'm with you too. I want to eat everything, mm-hmm. well, <laughs> and I'm five years into it, and I still will be like, if there's a butterscotch pudding, I want to eat the whole thing. So it's best that I just pass. And it doesn't even take that. Yeah, it doesn't even take that much to kind of get me going either. Um, yeah, I noticed it a few weeks ago at work is that they had chips during a meeting, and it happened to be like a four hour meeting, and I wasn't even hungry. I was just bored. So I took a chip yeah. and then I wanted, oh my God, now I'm starving. You know, it just like kicked it the, in and it's like. The times that I have been the most, I mean, the times that have been the most productive for me with as far as like food and emotional eating and it's yeah. really tough to do, but if you can catch yourself, it's a, it's like a golden moment. Like you said, if you can go, if you catch yourself going rooting around for something what did I want those chips? I want the thing. Or somebody brought that thing in the house. I just want to eat it. I just want to eat it. I just want to eat it. Mm-hmm. If you'll go, what is that? I didn't want to eat that. And now all of a sudden I do. And really ask yourself, what thought did you actually have right before you wanted to eat that food? Mm-hmm. Something just came to you that was negative. I swear to God, it happens every time. If you'll get in touch with it, there's generally something there. Either, let's say you're sitting in the meeting and you're bored. Right. You're probably like, I'm bored. I feel miserable. I'm pissed off about something or I'm, I'm ornery or I'm feeling frustrated or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Some negative thought came to you. And then the response is, well, go eat that thing. You'll feel better. You'll go feel eat better. That thing. You'll feel better. Mm-hmm. And so if you can tune in, like I, I've had stuff that's like as obvious as like, I didn't get the job that I was on hold for. And it was a big job. And my agent calls and say, you didn't get the job. And I feel sad. And I didn't put it together that I would immediately go in the kitchen and start rooting around for some sort of chocolate thing. I didn't put it together. I was like, Oh, I just want chocolate. And then I was like, hold on. Yeah. So something's happening here and we all do these things. So like if you can kind of get to the root of that, then you'll be like, oh, I'm not even hungry right now. I don't need to eat those chips. I'm just fucking pissed off. Right. Well, you yeah. And I mean? then, yeah. And it kind of goes kind of goes along the line. I was talking to uh, Nancy the other night and um, just talking about money issues. And I said, I have this I have this problem because I grew up with no money. Yeah. I have this problem that when I have like money's tight, I have this urge to go spend money. 
Isn't like, that interesting? Like, you want to rebel. I believe that's oh, human nature, like, John. Yeah, yeah but, I, but it's like really strong in me, and it's like something I really have to fight against. And it's almost the same uh, thing with food sometimes. It's like, it's like damn it, I'm, I'm going to eat that. I'm not going to be told I can't have that. Well, and that's, you know? and that's, again, you're coming back to the whole belief system thing. A right. belief, a negative belief that's not serving you is coming up in that moment. Right. Which Absolutely. probably is when money is tight, you're thinking, and I don't know what your beliefs is around money, but for example, you would be thinking something like, well, why don't I have enough money? Why don't, why, why does it feel like I never have enough? Am I not worthy enough? Am I not, you know what I mean? Those things come up and they're so subtle. Right. And they're so subconscious that they're that of course you want to go act out. That's why people are like acting out, doing crazy shit all the time. Drugs, mm-hmm. food, sex, mm-hmm. shopping, all the things that we use to try to like squelch those negative beliefs from coming up instead of addressing the belief going, you know what I mean? That It takes work. But d- d- this is a process that I do every single day of my life. I try to look to the day before and say what came up because <laughs> yeah. let's like let's work that out, because if not, don't worry, it'll keep coming up. Until you work it out. Yeah, that's that's really good advice. And, it, you know, the problem is that it just doesn't go away. So it gets there constantly with me. Yeah, yeah but, it'll um, keep reminding you of its presence. That's for yeah, until you oh until you God. get it sorted out. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. also too why some people you see some people um, who are they're like, I've tried every diet. I've tried everything. I've tried everything. I've tried everything. And then all of a sudden something just snaps in them and they're done. They're just done and they lose the weight. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of belief work that happens. And so then that's why they can be huge and do Weight Watchers and it works for them because your belief system will override a lot of things. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Anyway, that's my diatribe. <laughs> no, there's <laughs> there's good nuggets in there. A couple one, two. <laughs> a couple one or two. Did you actually just say that's my diet tribe? <laughs> she well, did. well played if you did. <laughs> I wish I wish I were that clever. I'm not I'm not very punny. You know what I mean? No, you're not a punny uh, lady. That's no, not. I'm not a punny lady. <laughs> I like that pity like, oh, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Mm, I'm so <laughs> I, ha- I have to say, though, I mean, like getting off that now a little bit, but I have to say if, uh, if people listening don't know who you are, they need to go Google you. And watch some of your clips that are out there because they are hilarious. Oh, and, thanks. Yeah, and well, YouTube. We'll go straight to your website. Um, oh the yeah, four or five right years there. They are just awesome. Uh, bachelorette parties come to mind. I uh, can't share any of that on our show. <laughs> no, is... but you're gonna have to bleep out half of what I've said here. Well, one of my but... funny, my one. No, we won't. But uh, one of my funniest uh, things that I saw of you was the uh, if the kids find it, they'll play with it. Oh, the, the, that the, the, hilarious uh, yep. the the gun Anna has sent me that at least on three occasions because I'm like, can you please resend this to me? And everyone <laughs> I send it to just laughs. It's a really good spot. That was it's a pretty. The, it was a crazy day on set too because the 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 premise is is that I go to pick up my child from a play date. And the other moms, I say, how do they do? And she's like, oh, they were great. And then the boys run outside and they're playing swords um, (laughs) with dildos that they have got, (laughs) vibrators that they've gotten out of her bedside drawer. Right. And we watch them horrify. And that actually was a real shot when I cover my mouth at the end (laughs) is because – one of them accidentally cut on while we were shooting it and they used that take. I was like, and I would cover my mouth cause I started to laugh and cause I, and all day long. Cause we have these two seven year old boys on sets who are playing swords with actual vibrators. Like you have to shoot that to be real. <laughs> and so we had to call them swords all day. And the name yeah. of the spot is swords because we couldn't say <laughs> to the little boy, yeah. Hey, you're playing with dildos kid. Yeah. Like, yeah. That would be yeah. that would be not right. Well, they're going to figure this out like around the age of. That's 14. what I was wondering. I was like, but you know what? They're going to be when they're teenagers. They're going to be so happy that they're either going to be mortified or they're going to be so stoked they were a part of that. Be, yeah, they're going to be. They're going to be stoked. Yeah. I think so. I've too. shared that clip as I said with probably I don't know at least a hundred people, and most of the time people laugh. But the funniest, I think, the truest response is you're saying you covered your mouth when the kids were at when you know playing and it turned yes. on. Out of left field, you know what I mean? Uh, somebody, some like, obviously a female, her response was not like, oh, that's disgusting or anything. That is, I'd be mortified if that happens. And you sit there and you think about it for a second. Like, you just admitted to something you probably shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, why would it happen? <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. Gotta tell you, that, that's impossible to happen in my house, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It, ma- it makes you think. That's all. Yeah, that's all she th- was trying to say. It makes you think. It makes you think. Yes. It makes you think. And the, the other, the other one I always like is the uh, the Siri one on Kimmel. Was it? On oh Kimmel? yeah, that was. Yeah, I did that a that couple times for Kimmel. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. The, the response you... I always get from people is, that, "Is that your real voice?" Or are they like dubbing you... in Siri? I was no, like, "No, that's because my real sounds, voice." <laughs> yeah, it sounds like Siri. It's like yeah. You had that voice down. If they ever need a new Siri, you got the job. Um, I actually know the woman who voices Siri and she's Susan Bennett is her name. Very nice lady. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, super cool. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that they do actually have a new Siri voice, but we're so used to the old Siri voice that I, I don't, I just use the old Siri voice. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know how yeah. to do new Siri. We Siri do. classic. <laughs> yeah. Classic Siri. <laughs> there you go. Circa 2013 Whatever. Siri. Yeah. So that's what i if go the audience for. hasn't picked up on it here uh and you, you you're very much with the the health and the fitness there but you have a lot of other stuff going on john read it in your bio and uh pre-roll we were starting to talk to you about some of your upcoming things do you yes. want to uh, take a few minutes and get into some of that i don't oh, want to sure. short on any of that because um like weekly i'm going and looking and i'm like is anna coming to the northeast because uh you know I would love to come see your shows. Uh, oh, that's good. When, do you know coming? when this episode is going to air? Next Monday. Oh, perfect. Okay, so we are uh, we're in Los Angeles. We're doing Flappers on April 4th. And the West – no, I'm sorry. The West Side Comedy Festival – no. Flappers on April 4th. <laughs> the West Side Comedy Festival um, at, that's in Santa Monica on April 11th. And then we are headed to Boston for April 19th through the 22nd. We're doing the Women in Comedy Festival, which is a great festival in Boston. So everyone come out. And, it, of course, if you bring Eat Happy, I'll sign it. Um, let me see. Oh, and then we're going to be in New York the week of uh, April. I'll put it all on my social media. But we're going to do, mm-hmm. be doing shows in Manhattan uh, the tw- at least the 24th and 25th of April, if not more. So we've got a, kind of a tour coming up. That we're doing, and this is the this is the stand up you do with your husband. Now, yes, right? I do a dual act uh, about marriage with my husband, who's also a comedian. He's a comedy writer. He uh, uh, he's a very funny guy. Yeah, <laughs> and we have, have to, a very have funny relationship. Yeah, <laughs> but we 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 put it all out there. We don't we don't uh, mince words with each other. Well, you so, know what? You know, it's it's like your therapy. It is. Well, oh. our daughter went to college this fall. Yeah. So we basically had to like it's either work on a project together or like you know actually face our problems. We're not going to do that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Oh, so why would you do that? <laughs> no, that's a dumb idea. Um, so yeah, no, we have a good time, and we hope that everybody who watches, if you've ever been in a long term relationship, hopefully it will it will resonate. I'm sure it would. But do you feel like it helped? It does help you work through some of the issues, like putting it up on stage like that. Um, by the time a joke makes it to the stage, Mm -hmm. it's been through so many iterations that we've already done the work of, um, (laughs) that hurts my feelings. You know what I mean? Like we've already said, like, you can't joke about that. That hurts my feelings. We did try to do a roast, uh, (laughs) to our writers group. We showed up with roast jokes. And what was funny was I, I roasted him, did my jokes, and everyone thought that was hilarious. And then he did his jokes, which I totally approved, by the way. Yeah. I totally – I did. I thought they were funny. He roasted me, and everyone's like, you can't say that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you can't right? roast a woman. You <laughs> no. know what I mean? Especially not your wife. And I was like, but that's funny. <laughs> but- He's, he said I look like if Winona Ryder fucked E.T. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no, it's not. You can't. He should never say that. <laughs> you should never say that. To you. <laughs> oh, my God. That. The images, the images. Now I'm thinking. Much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's. but the thing is, I think I told him, I was like, he always had this joke when I was nine months pregnant that I looked like E.T. Because I had that was back to before I was diagnosed with the celiac. So I was very thin <laughs> and I had this big pregnant belly and I have no shoulders and a big head like E.T. And so and he said, when you look like E.T., nine months pregnant, you look like E.T. Oh, so great. so anyway, but we have that, that kind of a relationship where he can I, say to me, you look that's like what I'm E.T. You know, that's 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 a good relationship that someone you, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. say that to you and you laugh. Because oh, yeah, not, totally. He obviously, you know, loves you and has married you. You know, he, he doesn't think you look like E.T. 
but no, I would, funny. I would hope not in in reality. <laughs> Unless he has a thing for ET. Maybe he yeah. does. He's an ET fetish. There's fetishes. anything wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. He has an ET fetish. Truth comes out. <laughs> you can use that if you want. Thanks. He's in the other room put, placing Reese PCs up to your bedroom. Aw, <laughs> <laughs> E.T. Aw, <laughs> E.T. I love E.T. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, actually, it's a show I'd like to see because I like that, that kind of back and forth. I mean, you don't see that a lot, though. I mean, go back to, you know, even before my day, George and Gracie. Yeah. You know. Yeah, there's not a lot of dual acts and uh not there are husband not and wives. Of, yeah, it's but because most comics aren't dumb enough to marry another comic, you know what yeah, I mean? For one, right. <laughs> so yeah. we're stupid and we decided to share that stupidity with the world. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I, I think it's great. I think it's great that you guys can joke back and forth with each other like that and even if you get your feelings hurt, it becomes part of the show. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So there's that no there's true. there's no throwing anything at him on stage that you haven't pre discussed then. <laughs> no, but we do talk about the items that we've thrown at each other in rage over the years, and I've thrown a lot of stuff at him, and he's only thrown a, a chair, but not at me, just definitely because of me. <laughs> oh, you mean like actually throwing things? I thought you meant like you know verbal banter, but you're oh, talking no, no, like no. I'm talking about where Italians throwing objects. Italians? One time. Italians throwing objects. That yes. should just be a whole series. Um, <laughs> I uh, I was mad at him, and I went and I grabbed I grabbed this candle off of the thing, and then I like I was gonna throw it at him, and then in this like a split second moment, I was like, "That's too heavy. That I don't want to actually like hurt him." You know what I mean? So I put it back down, and then I grabbed like a a little like lightweight box, <laughs> threw it at it. Like it's so lame. <laughs> so that's marriage right there. Cool. That's, Ita- that's Italian, right? That's, that's Italian. I can tell you, my my mom uh, missed my head when I was sixteen by like an inch with a cast iron skillet. Oh, <laughs> it came. She that's, way. She, she was and, bad at you. Oh, she and she's a little four foot eleven. She's four foot eleven, no matter how you measure her. Oh my you god! Know, so you know, up and down, around. It's four foot eleven. So <laughs> yeah, she picked up that iron, <laughs> and I came around to say something to her, and it was like zinc right by my <laughs> head. Holy! See. My mom was not Italian. My dad was Italian. I didn't live with him, but my mom was not Italian. I just got, mm. the, I just got switches and and spankings on the butt. Oh, so that's no. that's what I got. But my husband's mom used to hit her with, uh, hit them, hit the boys with um, a wooden spoon. While the yeah. spoon she was cooking with would hit them with it. <laughs> oh yeah, and it was even better like, because what? my grandmother did that because, and it was even better because it was hot from the gravy. Oh my god. <laughs> You know, you leave a wealth on. And people wonder why we don't do corporal punishment for children anymore. (laughs) Hot spoon. Ah, she branded you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this one right here got from Grandma, back in back in back in ot two. (laughs) Exactly, all the scars. (laughs) Oh well, well, Anna, it's been like an hour. So. Oh yeah, it has. Look at us. Yeah, I know. Look at us. Talky, talky. This was I, like, and this is kind of what I told Rob. I said, you know, once we get her on, it's just going to go. So. <laughs> this know, is true. This you is didn't true. have to tell me that. I figured this was. Yeah, gonna yeah. Happen, we we so. knew that was going to happen. So, but you know, we'd the, love to have the one thing I again. appreciate though Always. is uh, with this, John, is the unlike the uh, how was your the conversation was flowing, but you didn't break it by continuing to go. What what do you think about that, Rob? What do you think about that, Rob? He must have said that like <laughs> forty times last time. Like the conversation is <laughs> going so well. Like I'm not as vain to think like my word count needs to be up there. So you know, <laughs> I could just sit back and let it happen. Well, so. what? Well, yeah. Well, see that that's me trying to feel feeling bad. I say, well, well, Rob hasn't said something in a while. I need to say something. <laughs> What do you think about that, Rob? <laughs> Rob, Rob, you uh, there? Rob, yeah, Rob, you there? That's really uh, funny. Um, it's very, it's it's not very often that I go off on tangents, though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will go off on rants now and then, but not tangents. <laughs> it's very specific. So, so. So, like I said, uh, it was great having you on. We want to have you on again. We sent, Thank we, you. We sent an invite to Vinny. He didn't answer us. I got to say this. <laughs> Vinny is the worst. I know. At getting back. So, don't take it personally. Uh, uh, we didn't. And that's, and you know, I think I said it. It's like, yeah, we're going to hear from Anna right away. Yeah. But we won't hear. We won't hear. We may not hear from Vinny for a month or two. 
Yeah, or sudden, just we'll write him again. Yeah. yeah, just keep bugging him. Those I'm sure he has his people answering his emails right now. I t- I'm telling <laughs> you, he will text me, and I'll see the text come through, and he'll say, "Hey, can you, you know, can you uh, podcast, you know, tomorrow at four or whatever?" And yeah. I'll write him back. I can only do like three. Let me know ASAP, and I can move stuff around. And yeah. I swear, it's like he took his. He's like he te- he hit send on his text, and then threw <laughs> his phone into a volcano. Because I'm like, how do you? Because you have to see the dots from me. Yeah. Te- you know what I mean? You have to know. Right. Like how he's he's he doesn't check his phone very often. <laughs> yeah, and then he, and then he gets mad when I get mad at him about it. Well, right. And there, I know people like that, too. It's like you just asked me a question. You um, just sent me the you thing. You just asked me. Jennifer, Jennifer Coltrera used to be, do that to me. She'd <laughs> ask me a question and then I'd answer it. And then it's like and then like five hours later, she'll she's finally answering me. Now, she's right. a doctor and I understand things. This happen. is true. It's true. It's she like, busy. She she might be busy. Yeah. But, Saving a life or or you know, responding to John. Me. Well, you know, priorities. I but listen, I get it, but I'm saying like he just texted me and I That's immediately I wrote him back. And I'm like, what is happening? And then he, I literally won't hear from him for twenty four hours. I'm like, what did you do? What are you doing? <laughs> But see now it's now your your relationship with him has progressed to the point that you can yell at him about things like that. Oh, I yell at him. I've yelled at him from the beginning before I even knew him. <laughs> I um, <laughs> we just have that relationship. Um, but also too, like I know his phone, and something happened with his Twitter and with something else where it gives him notifications constantly. And I've sat with his phone for two hours and tried to turn it off. Something's broken with his Twitter, and oh, really? so. So he he has learned to ignore all the notifications mm-hmm. because the app keeps notifying. And you know how much like we always joke about how Twitter is our second job because we're always ma- we make ourselves available to answer questions on Twitter, which is, you know, yes. good. Yes. But I've turned off the notifications on all social media, so I won't see any social media unless I purposefully go on to answer the questions. Yep. He can't do that because it's broken. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> so he literally had his Twitter thing. Looks like it says like ten thousand seven hundred forty notifications. I'm not kidding on that oh, red badge. Has, has he tried like un- uninstalling it and reinstalling it? Yes, yes. Okay, because that's crazy. happened to me before too, and I and that worked for me. But yeah, he's got something busted in there. Something's busted in there. Something's but anyway, busted. so he's just it, he's trained himself to not pay attention when yeah. somebody texts back. Well, we, we didn't we didn't expect him to answer right away. We expect no. you know we knew you'd get back with us. Yeah. So, but yeah. the, the reason I bring that up is because he remember he got very upset last time when we had you on before him. Well, then he needs to get back to people faster. That, that's what I said. <laughs> so there we go. Says it, well, we sent it to you the same day. Two different emails. He doesn't really care because he's busy with doing Adam Carolla's and J- Dr. John. Drew stuff. He's, he's busy being <laughs> Incorrect, busy John. Being it famous. was the same email. I'm just got to stick up for myself. Okay. I put, well, right. the I put them both on there. I figured I would use, and I'll say it this way. He's responded to me from that address. Um, so I figured he would actually, I knew he would at least see it unless he's discontinued using it since then. And if nothing else, when he says something, we can say, well, no, Anna got the exact same email at the exact same time. That's so. right. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> all right. She so, just all right. Person. All right, Anna. So uh, once again, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank um, you for having me, you guys. I really enjoyed it. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See, she's always a good show, Rob. She's the best. She's the best. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and end it there, I guess. Right. I guess so. The show for me and you, yeah, huh? we don't yeah. talk. We don't talk post roll. We don't need to talk. Um, so uh, this will go up next week. So April sixth, you'll be hearing this. We actually recorded it uh, March. What is today? Twenty sixth. We did have a show go up today. The damn try show went up today. So, so anything else, Rob? I got nothing else. What, what do you What do you think about that, Rob? But I think I think that worked out very well, John. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put an E before the show, though. Yeah, there was some. Uh, I'm not bleeping it because it's too funny. So it is. <laughs> I know. will put an E. I will put an E on the show. So uh, normal normal Facebook channels, Team E for E. If you look at look under any social media, Team E for E, you're gonna find us. Make sure you leave us a review on the podcast apps that you have. Join the group. Visit the website enduranceforeveryone.com. Uh, team me for e.com uh, if you need coaching let us know about coaching and we will see you next week
Thanks for listening to the Endurance for Everyone podcast. If you have comments or questions for the show, send an email to team E4E at enduranceforeveryone.com. And remember, swim calm, bike strong, and run steady.